What's going on guys, Arcane here, back with another Drivable Directors video, and in today's video, we have uh, quite the fun one. So, uh, my opinion of Baby has been somewhat controversial over the, you know, the time span that he has been out. But, uh, very first, uh, someone has actually put out a video kind of just ranting about uh, my opinion and my thoughts and feelings on the Raider. Now, you know me, I love rants, so if I get to rant about a rant... <laughs> We're good for we're in for a good time. We're in for a good time. Uh, one thing I would like to say, uh, this creator uh, was very respectful. And I want to give them very you know a lot of props for that because I know sometimes I uh, tend to throw some name calling when I uh, talk smack on people uh, and matches whatnot. From what I've gathered, I've only seen like bits and pieces of the video, but the guy was very civil. So I want to give uh, shout outs to that. So I ask you all to be just as civil as he was to me because he didn't have to do that. So I do give him props for. Uh, you know, keeping it a civil discussion, even if he does feel passionately about Baby as he does, right? So again, I just want to give a, a shout out to uh, Lay uh, Charvon. I'll have a link uh, in the description to their video if you guys want to watch it and, uh, you know, calm down your thoughts below on their video. Uh, also, I do welcome this. If you guys ever want to, like, press me on an opinion or, like, a topic that I've kind of been, uh, you know, talking about frequently, whether it was, like, the blocking thing I know a couple months back, uh, I'm, I'm really down for that. I really like this kind of community-driven stuff. I would actually love to see more of this. Um, although I, I think in, in, in certain scenes like Dokkan, it can get a little toxic. I think the fact that Truth can make entire videos just kind of reacting to the community is like really fun and kind of just makes a community a community. So I'm so down for stuff like this. I just want to say uh, first and foremost. And before I dive into it, I want to say my stance on Baby has kind of uh, changed. A little bit. I still think he is by far the worst Raider on release in Dragon Ball The Breakers. It's not even contestable, in my opinion. In my opinion, I, I think he is by far, by and large, the worst Raider on release in this game. Um, if you want to argue he's not the worst Raider in the game right now, that's totally fair. And I think I might have said that. And may, that might not be entirely true, just because like I think Ginyu is in a pretty rough spot. People have argued Frieza's kind of aged pretty poorly as well. So whether or not Baby is the definitive worst Raider in the game, I still think his level one is the weakest, but we'll get into that once we, uh, you know, dive deep into this video here. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, the title of this video is Drive All the Breakers, ranting about Iron Kane's heinous opinions about Baby. Let's get into it. Greetings. I'm going to get right into this. I'm going to be talking about this absolutely heinous, and I mean atrocious, opinion. <laughs> from Iron Kane here about Baby over the course of Season 6. Let me turn it off Obviously, a little bit. Obviously, this is nothing actually serious. I respect him as a content creator, definitely actually bringing people into the game, but his opinion on Baby has cues. bothered me so much to where I now need to rant about it. He has said that Baby's level 1 is the weakest level 1 in the game. Let, let me just put it into perspective. Bro. <laughs> I don't know why this is going, man. So, bro, Baby's level one is is really, really, really bad. Uh, I, I truly feel like it is the only level one in the game that unless, like, it, it is, like, almost entirely RNG because survivors can just completely avoid you. Now, I understand, like, uh, in terms of spawns, you can spawn next to Baby and whatnot. You can get cocked in that regard. But everybody has access to floating device and everybody had access to Jocko ship. Um, it's just like there's just ways to mitigate baby. Baby cannot fly as a level one, right? So as long as you're kind of like aware or active, like literally just one player, one of the seven players can just go around being the UAV for the team, keep pinging where baby is. And if the team knows what they're doing, they'll avoid those areas, right? But let me not... We, we, we're barely into this at all, so let me let me uh, let's get back into the video. I apologize, but that triggered me a little bit. For you, the Spopovich still exists. All right, I, I paused way too soon. So, you know, what, let, let me let him. All right, we just pause. Let me let, let me let him let me hear him out first. Let, let's let's hear him out first. Let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. He still exists. He is still in the game, as long as he is here and unchanged significantly. He will always be the worst. He can be jumped so easily and you just outright win the game within the first two minutes of survivor now aside from that talking about baby individually by itself isolating it he has so many things all right i think he's done talking about spopovich so i kind of want to dive into that there uh spopovich 
as opposed to babies level one although there's not you know a whole lot that you can do you don't have a break strike right so you're kind of just you know gonna be taking that ass beating essentially if you get jumped but the difference between you know uh spopovich and baby level one is that out the gate as soon as you come into existence versus baby level one you can counter it literally just by being in the sky right spopovich you know assuming that players all all are not running um like the automatic transformation gohan's transformation that lets you get like uh you know the level above for like a couple seconds for free you have no way to fight back to fight back against Spobovich, right? You really do not have a way to fight back. And they have since buffed Spobovich where he only needs three civilians now as opposed to the four they needed it previously. Baby needs five, five, five civilians. Five, the only raider in the game, by the way. Only need, five, five civilians. Spobovich needs three, three, and that's it. And, you know, I, I'm... At this point in the game, Spobovich is very slow. Most people, they're running Jocko ships. So it's very, very easy to break Spobovich's ankles. And is jumping Spobovich fairly easy? Yeah, but like, it's not as easy as it used to be because they buffed his health pool to my understanding as well. And in a jumping situation, you can actually get some energy by using Yamu well and whatnot. There, there are people still to this day that have boners for Spobovich and will defend him saying that, you know, Spobovich gaming and whatnot... That will literally 1v7 with Spopovich. Now, to be fair, you can't feasibly do that with Baby's Level 1. But Baby's Level 1 can be countered out the gate. And you just can't do that with Spopovich. If Spopovich gets, you know, a surprise on a survivor. And, you know, they used all their active skills. They won't be able to get away. Whereas opposed... I, I mean, with Baby, to be fair, they wouldn't be able to either. But at the very least... You know, they would just have to get to a high height at that point, right? But to be fair, I mean, you would get caught regardless with Baby. And I think what he's probably going to be getting into here is probably the camping situation uh, with Baby, where with Spopovich, you're not really doing that. You're not really seeing that as much. And it's also just not incentivized as much with Spopovich because you want to be getting level two, right? Unless you are doing a Spopy challenge, there really is no reason to stay in your level one. So, you know... For tit for tat, no active skills. You're both kind of screwed anyway. And you could argue even more so with babies level one. So that's fair. But again, I would just like to point out that you at least have a chance with baby. Again, uh, assuming you have, like, even if you don't have instant rise, which I understand not everybody has instant rise, you have the floating device. You could pop floating device, grapple just to a high height, a floating device ship. Floating, like, floating device literally into anything. You can literally, like, this is what I recommend against Broly's. I think I, I, I feel like I recommended this back in the day. It was literally just to hop on floating device. You just see where Broly is and go the fucking other way. And you just do the same for baby. But, you know, let's, let's see what he, uh, has to say here. Things he can do to just be the scum of the earth. And you're, you know, maybe some people are going to say, oh, not all babies are bad. If you want to play them nice. Okay. You can say that about every raider, but let's talk about the infamous camper, Goku Black. Goku Black will literally down someone and just watch over them for 90 seconds doing the level 2 strat. And there's not much you can do unless you have like a Senzu Bean or if you're running a healer build and you have Dragon Clan healing. Other than that, but even then, you can actually do something against that. But when it comes to baby level 1, if he gets the jump on someone, which, yes, sometimes it can be very difficult, but let's just say you get one, just one, or you just spawn directly next to two survivors for some reason. Like, why does that happen so much? It is the most frustrating thing about going against Baby is the fact that he can legitimately... People complain about these Broly spawns. Baby can spawn directly next to you, and it's not even an exaggeration. People can get down within three seconds of the match. So one thing I want to say here is I, I totally agree with him with this. Um, being able to spawn right next to survivors, literally at their spawn or spawning with them, I think that is ridiculous. I think that's very silly. But I think the reason why the devs did that is because they have to help the level one baby out. Why is that not a case for any other raider? It's because baby preys on survivors not realizing where he is and getting the jump on them. 
and you know i mean i think at this point people are pretty used to like baby shenanigans at at where we're at now but i think they they did that as a way to help baby players out at level one why would they need to do that because it fucking sucks dude baby like he sucks at level one but anyways you know let's, let's get back into it bro that should never be a thing I, I agree. Not should not be a thing. Breakers. But when it comes to this, let's say he gets lucky, he spawns next to you, or he just downs you normally because he's jumping, you can't hear his footsteps, you get a little unlucky. That can happen. That's bound to happen. It might not happen every game, but it definitely happens more than half, I would say. So Baby gets this. He can just sit on your body. Nothing you can do. Quite literally nothing. If you send you them now now with this i think um this is more so a debate about like baby just being poorly designed because baby literally incentivizes camping because of the servant mechanic if i am going up against a pre-made I, I think typically i don't camp a body but when i've seen like you know uh raiders do this i kind of understand why if they're going up against a decked out group running all meta running all stuns running high power uh, super attacks and whatnot can you really blame the raider for wanting to eliminate a player and getting a servant can can you really blame them but my you know counter argument to that is although one player is going away during that time where the raider is essentially doing nothing at this point you know a good team will be collecting the dragon balls they'll be planting keys they'll be leveling up and although that one player will be eliminated you know, it's more than likely that some of the players will be level 2, maybe even level 3. They'll have a majority of the Dragon Balls. Maybe they'll have some sodas on them. Now, this is what's the thing. Is this going to happen all the time? Of course not. But I'm just saying that's what a good team is going to do. And I feel like my argument is coming from the perspective of going up against pre-mates. I think Baby is literally the one of the worst raiders going up against the pre-mate because it, it genuinely feels like luck and it genuinely feels like orange, RNG, just like... Hopefully this fucking guy doesn't realize I'm behind him and like half of the time I get baited half of the time I literally get baited like the only confirm the only confirm baby has For getting a survivor At level one is if a survivor goes into a cave If a survivor goes into a cave or a house and they have no way of like destroying the house or like getting out of the cave very very quickly They are going to get caught every single time, right? So then what would survivors just end up doing? avoiding caves right and other pre-mades they will just straight up save uh you know i know some people just avoid sieves some uh pre-mades kind of just have it figured out just based on like the distance you are from the effective sieve they can kind of like get to tell that it is an effective sieve so they'll uh save all the non-sieves or all the the good sieves and then all you'll have is effective sieves left and then you'll be you know forced to auto evolve and whatnot and auto evolving with baby is a death sentence i i mean you guys can let me know in the comments below i generally do not know if i've ever won a single fucking game where i've auto evolved uh as baby through his level one because what what is it four minutes something fucking crazy with like that and they, they've not touched this at all for some reason i think they put all their chips on uh survivors interacting with the infective civs and making baby basically auto evolve through his mechanics right but, uh, yeah, you know, camping with Baby does suck. It's not really fun at all. I don't think it's fun for Baby either. But, unfortunately, it's kind of just you were incentivized to do so based on his kit. Baby has a bad kit. The fact that he can have an active skill that's just straight up not available, potentially, depending on how the game goes, is fucking insane to me. You could just potentially not have an active skill if you don't get a servant. And I think a lot of people claim that servants are crazy they're fucking op dude if you have one servant it's dick it, it, it means nothing it a good group they'll see a servant vanish kick them and they're fucking gone bro like and servants are the most useful um you know during etm phases and whatnot but the thing is if you have a lot of servants that means a lot of the team is dead and at that point you're probably gonna win the game anyway so anyways we, we still got a lot of video to go through so i apologize for uh interjecting so much but let's let's uh get back into it. well you just gave baby free evolution energy and now they're completely out of the game and he has an instant servant if you don't do anything for the 90 seconds sure you can find some power keys you can set them you can maybe even get the super time machine server. now one thing I, one thing i'm sorry i know i just interjected but one thing i wanted to mention is now correct me if i'm wrong comments this isn't something i'm 100 sure of because there, there really isn't a concrete way to 
counter a camping level one baby. I am curious though. I am curious though. Say if you have a Senzu bean and you go by the body, you pop a smoke bomb. Would that give the survivor enough time to instant rise or like float, throw down a floating device and get out of dodge? Would that actually give the player enough time to do that? Because if that is the case, that kind of invalidates the argument that there's no counters to doing this. Uh, again, I'm not 100% certain on that, so I'm not going to like ride on that because I, I don't even know 100% myself. You don't really see people doing that. But there is a counter to Baby's level when you can throw down a smoke bomb and he just can't do anything to you because he needs to be locked on, right? So that's just one thing I wanted to bring up. Again, I don't know if that's a like for sure Within way to time, counter the camping. Really lucky. But now it's a 1v6. And if you really rush the keys like that, that means you're probably only level 1, maybe 2 for most people as Survivor. That's not going to be a pretty good fight. They can just go straight for the super time machine and you're gone. Plus, level 2 baby. One, one, thing, one thing I'll say about... I'm sorry. I, I, I feel bad. I'm not letting bro talk at all. One thing I want to say is that if you're... You know, if you're playing the keys really, really quickly without getting the levels necessary to defend the STM, it's kind of a team diff. That's kind of a, a, a team skill issue. Now, I understand that most, like, you know, solo queue matches are not going to be going that way, but this is a team-based game. I understand that everybody is playing with team in mind. There's been a handful of times where I intentionally did not want to plant a key, and I see some schmuck walk right up. Planet. I'm like, great, dude. Well, he's going to fucking destroy in two seconds, dude. N nice work. So I understand that. But I do think, you know, if a baby is sitting on a body and they are eliminating one player confirmed, if the team is not collecting Dragon Balls, if they're not leveling up, then that's kind of on the team at that point. Now, to be fair, you know, maybe the team is getting unlucky. I'm not saying every situation is going to be perfect. But there are some ways to put yourself in the best situation possible for that SDM phase. Not saying you're going to win every time. But you can put yourself in a more advantageous situation than opposed to putting the keys down really quickly. You don't really want to key rush anymore um, without a plan, uh, especially with the level two stuff and no supplies. So you really can't just like willy nilly uh, plant keys without a, you know any thoughts. He has two breakers and a chase move or a dash, if you want to call it that. Oh that yeah, he is called, ridiculous for a level. He calls uh, break strikes breakers. I think I think that's very cute. I've never heard anybody refer to the break strikes as breakers. I think that's pretty cute. Level two, two breakers. Let me just reiterate, two breakers for a level two. Why does he have that? His little barrier. You know what? I'm gonna check the the name of it real quick, actually, so I don't get this wrong. It, it is the most ridiculous thing in the world because he has his regular breaker. You know, the break strike, the basic one. But then he also has, let's find it, what is it called? Shield Barrier. There it is. It, I think it's a 90 second cooldown, which is a long time. But the fact that you can find Baby by default, let's say you're fighting him, and he can breaker you with Explosive Wave, and then immediately you outplay him, you get a combo start on him, he can just have another breaker, which by the way, this breaker also makes him immune to Key Blast for a little bit of time. What in the world? This alone is just so unfun. But then he's got Wild Buster, which is a chase move or dash, whatever you want to call it. And it's just a decent chase move. And he has it for some reason at a level two. And then his supers, while not fantastic, are still great. They're still great. Finish Breaker isn't amazing. It's never been amazing. Not amazing on Vegeta. It's not amazing on him. Uh, when you're going against Beans, it's not going to do much. Big Bang Attack is actually a pretty good sniping move. It's not great, but it's pretty good. The explosion radius is around Goku Black's Kamehameha. Probably the same thing. And they don't really vary too much. And if he does camp out someone in level 1, like I mentioned, he gets rewarded for playing Scummy. That is the worst design decision based on Baby. When it comes to any design decision in any video game. I, I, I get what he's saying there, but you could argue any raider on the planet technically gets rewarded for playing scummy uh for face camping hard camping just because you're eliminating a player now of course baby is getting a little bit more bang for his buck because he's getting a servant in that case but you could kind of argue that for any raider on the planet it's just of course more difficult to counter rate uh you know baby's camping level we I, I, again with the smoke bomb thing i don't even know entirely if you even can now when it comes to the two uh break strike things that he has his uh, default break strike, the one that has the 30 second cooldown, the, the one that pretty much every raider in the game has, uh, that deals damage and that will knock uh, survivors back. 
the other one that he was referring to that uh, makes baby immune to key blasts and i also believe beam based supers as well if i'm not mistaken on that um that just simply knocks you back and that deals no damage now the reason why i think this is okay is because baby doesn't really have too much going for him in terms of a jumping situation uh that finish buster he has is pretty much his best option and you kind of just gotta like spam the camera around to like make sure you hit everybody as much as possible his snipe is okay i think it's fine uh i'm not really gonna harp on the fact that he said it's like you know pretty good or anything like that i, I think it's fine i think it's solid I don't, I don't think it's garbage but i don't think it's like anything to ride home about either uh, I think it's fine. It serves its purpose. It's a snipe. Uh, I, I will say, I think over the, the time of playing Baby more and more, I think I did definitely downplay his level 3. Uh, he basically has two snipes at level 3, one being the Death Ball, the other being the Final Flash. The Death Ball AoE and, and the Death Ball itself is so big that sometimes, depending on where you are, and especially during the SDM phase where like some parts of the map are eliminated where there's just walls, invisible walls, right? You can kind of just throw out a death ball and even final flash and the aoe can hit you so i think i have downplayed a level three baby a little bit but in terms of level two and the reason why i used to say that level two baby was better than level three was because at least he had some maneuverability with his dash he needs his dash he needs a dash because it allows him to get the places quickly it allows him to like escape in some way it allows him to catch survivors um and whatnot i mean really what you're seeing uh like pro survivors pro level fours super transfers do these days is stay back because without the dodge nerf people were kind of given the opportunity to be a lot more aggressive to be in your face because they were able to time dodges and whatnot now without the dodge only having one dodge for like five to seven seconds or whatever the hell it is people just kind of spam key blasts from afar and in terms of baby he de he technically does have a counter to this with that other uh break strike that he has but I believe if anybody like melees him or vanish kicks him, instantly loses it, right? He just instantly loses it. So that 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 can also be countered. And since he's only level two, it's not going to be really that difficult to do so, right? It's, it, it's a lot different than like Zamasu at level four when he has it because only the super transfer is going to be able to get rid of that barrier after you, you know, melee him. And I think it goes away after you melee him. I'm, I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, as well, but I, I, I feel like I covered like most of the points you mentioned there, but let, let, let's get back into it Not just Dragon Ball Breakers you should never reward bad behavior uh, As in like unfun gameplay uh, For instance, I'm sure Dead by Daylight is... and I, I think this is, is entirely true But my my counter to this is that this isn't exclusive to baby any raider can face camp in this game and again at level one baby you can argue it's you know a lot easier for the raider to do so because there is borderline either a very difficult counter i mean not difficult but you know what i mean we don't even know if that's a true counter the smoke bomb thing right but any raider doesn't really get penalized for doing this besides the survivors just like doing stuff on the background right so to that point again i am giving credit where credit is due for level one baby can't take advantage of this more so than uh most other raiders but all raiders can play scummy it just so happens that baby gets a servant for it and arguably one servant isn't going to change the entire tide of a match uh you know even if a raider uses it very very well at least in my opinion i don't know how you guys feel about that but that's just me is the biggest comparison to this just because it's an asymmetric game they have added so many features over the course of years yes uh about anti-camping about anti-slugging even which is slugging is when you're just down and they won't even you know uh finish you off or hook you in that game for instance i would i would love for breakers to add stuff like that as well by the way i think that would be awesome so it's kind of like how goku black level two does it where he'll just down you and just camp you there he'll just leave you there without even finishing you for the energy but this game has nothing for that so you can be a level one baby be the scummiest guy in the world <sighs> down someone camp them for 90 seconds and the game will give you a servant which are extremely powerful in the right circumstances. If you just throw them out willy-nilly while you're being jumped by like four different survivors, they're going to be gone in half a second. But guess what? They're great for camping. Oh boy. Yet again with Baby here. He is extremely good at this. I don't know why he's so good at camping. I don't know what they thought they were doing with this design decision with him. But it, it is horrible. And we're not even talking about his energy yet. 
in stage one baby if you just get civilians i think it's five civilians to get a level two that needs to be changed that aspect i'm perfectly fine with buffing him in that oh okay okay i, I was i was about to crash out bro okay all right all right that, that, w w take w take because it's less just bs and the thing is the thing is you can argue with that being so bad and so egregious it incentivizes the camping again so I, that definitely needs to be changed. Getting one shot without reaction times. Plus the fact that, let's say, you know, you used your mobility for whatever reason, but you have your dragon change in stage one. Since he doesn't have the heartbeat radius, you will always do the animation. There's like a forced animation that, that you'll be into. I'm that's sure that's fair. That's, that is a, that is a and fair criticism. And I've totally caught people because of that animation. I've complained about this animation before. I've been caught by Cybermen with this. I've been caught with. I've caught people with Baby with this. I don't know if it's happened to me directly, but I agree that that is very silly because if somebody sees Baby, they transform. They're in the animation. Baby gets a free down. Like that. That that's very silly. That's a very silly thing. But to be fair, that's been in the game since season two, so that's not unique to Baby in that regard because that's happened to, with Cybermen for me as well. Um, but you know, I, I that is still silly. That is still very very silly. That should not be a thing. Just kill you right as the second that ends and there's nothing you can do about it that needs to be changed where if you are facing the raider or something or maybe if you're midair something about the animation needs to be changed or you can just throw it out it's so unnecessary but moving on from that we talked about stage one we talked about stage two moving on to stage three he gets it so easily and that is the worst part the fact that he can get it, i do believe it's three i think it's three infections that gives him stage three i could be wrong now let's say okay let's say i'm wrong let's say four four is still like oh that actually sounds pretty hard to get to but then you realize he gets almost the exact same amount of energy from infecting the civilian as well so if he does get lucky and in stage one i say lucky just to you know be fair here but let's say he just gets it down in stage one which typically does happen he at least gets one and let's say he doesn't even care. i i i'm sorry i'm i'm sorry i can't i can't let that one go Saying that baby typically gets an infection in stage one. I, I think it's really dependent on what rank you're at, man. I think that's really dependent. I think that to sit there and say that, you know, it's guaranteed for baby to get at least one down. I, I just don't. I just I, I can't I can't get down with that just because even if that was the case. I still think it doesn't, like, you know, discount all the other faults that he has. Of course, you are eliminating that player, assuming they camp that player. Not every baby is going to camp. But, um, regardless, there have been times where, like, a baby's gotten somebody, but he got somebody at, like, right before he auto-evolved, right? So, I, I think, although there are, it, it's basically the two extremes, right? So, I understand that most average games, baby is going to get somebody, but there there's the two extremes. There's a... There's a game where baby gets like fucking the whole team at level one. I, I I'm aware of that. That happens. It's, I've I I love getting those games. I fucking need those games sometimes. Goddamn. But there's also the other extreme where you're just auto evolving, right? And I think you know, one thing that I wish um our boy here mentioned was the fact that his auto evolve is the worst auto evolve in the entire game because it is borderline four minutes, and in four minutes. People could have all the keys found and borderline planted, including Dragon Balls. People could be like level two and higher. I think not mentioning that is not really fair. Um, I don't think he's intentionally not mentioning that. Maybe just slipped his mind. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But I think that is definitely something you have to mention uh, when we're talking about Baby's level one and why I think it is so bad, right? Camp it at all. Okay, cool. He's still going to have plenty of civilians to find throughout the match. And he can get his stage three so quick. And yet again, the least, you know, everyone's least favorite part about Baby. He forces you into a cutscene. I don't like that. Every time he evolves. Nobody someone. likes that. Every single time. Yeah. Stage one to two, two to three, three to four. Why are we forced to watch this? The only one that is justified is two to three. Because two to three actually has a mechanic. Where if you are infected, you are displaced. So wherever you were before, after the cutscene ends, you'll... Is that just for two to three? I could have sworn it was for, like, even one to two. Am I crazy? Maybe it is just two to three. 
be somewhere else. Typically, it's not too, too far away, but sometimes you can be across the map. And the worst part about that is that even if you're down, you'll still be displaced. So you'll be like, you know, let's say you have 10 seconds left on your timer. You're getting revived. The cutscene triggers. You're probably going to die because right. I think they probably already used, what, their instant transmission to get over to you for that revive. You know, that, that's fair, but I think that's a very, very, I mean, unless that happens all the time, you guys can let me know in the comments below. I think that's a very, very niche circumstance where like someone is like about to die or like you're about to res them baby evolves and they they've moved i feel like i could probably i don't even recall what time that's happened to me now i'm not saying that never happens as it happened probably but i just feel like that's i don't think it happens as frequent as homie is making out to be here again if you if you guys agree with him by all means let me know just from my personal experience I haven't really done that to people. That hasn't, I mean, intentionally, I don't think I've done that to people. Um, I, didn't, I don't really feel like that happens too much in my Survivor games. Again, I, I'm just talking my experience. If that's happened to y'all a lot, let me know. But I just personally don't see that happening that much. Where babies, like, plan around that intentionally, right? Not saying he said that they plan it, but you know what I mean. To begin with, no one's going to go across the other side of the map to get you. But... Forcing you to cutscenes, that needs to be gone. Two to three, you can keep that if you really want to. I think that's fair. Uh, which is fine. Or if you want to code it, which they probably won't. Uh, Four, I think because, they don't. You know, the, the budget and they the lack keep. of player base here. To where maybe only the people that are infected have to watch the cutscenes for two to three. But definitely, one to two, we don't need to see that. Three to four, we don't need to see that. But talking about stage three. Yet again, uh, one thing, he has two breakers. One thing I want to mention as to why it's silly as to us watching Baby transform is because sometimes a Raider transforming mid-match is the difference between winning and losing. Because, like, for example, Frieza is a perfect example of this. Uh, if you are damaging Frieza and you make him level 4, make him level 3, level 2, whatever, what have you, and that stem is about to start, that animation that plays that forces Frieza, you know, to transform... That might be the difference between the STM starting and not starting, right? So that's what's really silly about Baby. Or getting a res off, getting a summon off, stuff like that, right? So I 100% agree with the fact that it should not be for every level. If you want to argue level 4 and maybe the 2 to 3 like he was as well, that's fair. But I think every level is a little egregious in my opinion as well. So just wanted to get that out there too. Why does he have two breakers? I don't know. Someone just decided they want... I... Okay, so the thing with the two break strikes... I don't really mind that much because I know how fucking shit baby is at level two. Like if he's getting jumped after, you, right, look, let me ask you this. After he uses two of his break strikes in a jumping situation, what the fuck is he doing next? What is he doing next? He's going to fly up, fly up and, and say a, a prayer really quick and hoping nobody catches him with a stun or some shit like that. And then like do the whole fly up into the set fly up into the sand try to loop as much as you can but but that ass in a, in a jumping situation after he uses two break strikes what the fuck is baby gonna do tell me i'm so curious that i think i think he is so fucking shit he needs it he needs it and i think that's the why the devs gave it to him i i think i mean i don't know but i just think he's that fucking bad he needed it uh because again he could have an active skill that just straight up potentially not even fucking there the entire game um i mean that's the entire game is a little excessive but you know what i mean even to level three it's possible that you still might have a fucking servant and, and well technically if you throw out all your servants and they all get fucking killed that's still an active skill that's not there i think the fact that he that that we have a raider that could just like not have an active skill is fucking insane to me is fucking insane to me i i just i hate that mechanic it's a cool mechanic i just it's just it's not enough of a reward for me uh you know again if you have like three servants that that's a game changer but again that's three players eliminated you would have already been in an advantageous situation the servants are kind of just icing on the cake at that point that's why i don't feel like they're worth it because players have to die and when players die you're already like getting the ball rolling to win hopefully anyway I'm not saying every time like a player or two dies you win but i'm just saying like you're already in a more advantageous state but okay let's let's continue wanted to be really nice i guess <laughs> and yet again he does have the call servant 
which he'll probably have one by stage three. You know, typically someone will be dead by then. But even if he doesn't, okay, let's say he doesn't. He's missing a slot then. All right. And then he has reverse shot, which I. I think I think we I think we glossed over that like that that's fucking crazy that like I literally we, we just fucking tiptoed over that. That, that like that's fucking insane to me like he doesn't have active skill well like, like bro come on man that that's fucking absurd and like the thing is his reverse shot is like okay but like that's it it's, it's just okay and then you have two you have two break strikes and okay active skill and then potentially not one at all like, that's why I literally, I, I've argued that I like level 2 baby better because at least he has that dash that you could use offensively and just for maneuverability, just like escapes as well. That's why I low-key, like, think, you know, kit-wise, level 3 baby sucks, but his super attacks do carry him, in my opinion. I think his key blasts are also slightly better. And, re re and reverse shot, in most cases, is at least confirmed damage, for the most part. Even if it isn't insane damage, it is, like damage confirmed for the most part anyways which i'm actually not too sure what it does i'm not gonna lie it's probably a combo but even if it's not that's not even important i'll just ignore that completely let's just pretend like that's an empty slot but that is something i don't own him completely let's just pretend like that's an empty slot but that is something i don't own him so <laughs> oh this changes everything this changes everything can i hear that again can i hear that again so i can't even see these let's just pretend like that's an empty slot but that is something i don't own him <sighs> brother doesn't know <laughs> he doesn't know what it's like bro he doesn't know what it's like Playing baby and hearing everybody say, Fly Nimbus, Fly Nimbus, and fucking pop instant rise and chocolate. He doesn't know. He doesn't know, bro. He always. Oh. Brother. Brother. No. No, this was going pretty well up until this point. Now, okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me turn off the dramatic music. Let, all right. Let me, let me, let me, let me stop. But. Does this mean if you've never played a raider, does that completely invalidate your opinion on that raider? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. I think that's a little ridiculous. But I do think that is, you know, I'm talking from the experience. The reason why I say baby is bad, and some people will say like, you just say baby is bad because you fucking suck. Like, dude, how many times did I fucking have to like pull out a crazy game, a crazy comeback, fucking like play out of my mind? To like prove that like yeah i definitely have some off baby games i've made some bad decisions I'm, i've like that's one thing i like i pride myself on is that i try to show you guys the fuck ups i try to show you guys the highlights and i try to show everything in between right like it's not like i was just like oh baby shit now like no dude i fucking played him for hours he fucking sucks he, he's he's bad dude like i didn't just wake up one day it's just like baby fucking sucks now like no dude i like it's based on my experience playing him as a uh, pl versus as a survivor and actually physically playing as the raider now again i'm not trying to say that charbon's uh, you know opinion here is completely invalidated by never playing baby but a lot of my frustration with baby and a lot of the reason why i fucking call him bad is because i actually played the fucking raider now again i don't think that this credits homie completely you can definitely form an opinion on a Raider, but without ever playing them. Maybe you just didn't want to buy a baby. Maybe you didn't want to support this season. I don't fucking blame him, dude. This season fucking sucked. Um, but with that in mind, you know, I feel like to get a full picture of a Raider, not playing them does kind of stink. And I think that does kind of hurt uh, Homie's rant here a little bit. But granted, he can still form an opinion based on his uh, playtime and experience. But I also think the reason why I think Baby is bad is not just by me playing as Baby. I think it's also by me playing against Baby as well. Because I've been on the receiving end of everybody popping Flying Nimbus and just fucking off um, using the launch skill and just picking everything up too, right? Um, and I've seen my team doing it as well. And I'm like, well, this Baby's fucked. I hope he finds five sieves. Like, you know what I mean? So just, I think... Although, again, I want to say this doesn't completely discredit everything he's said up until this point. But I think 
never playing the Raider and experiencing why I think he's bad. You know, I mean, who, who knows? Maybe Trevon's a fucking god, and he, he got ba he would get baby, and he would win every single fucking game, right? Like, I don't know, but I'm just saying, from my experience, he's the worst Raider on release, and he has the worst level one, in my opinion. I think, again, for the reasons I, I, I said before, uh, at literally, as soon as the game starts, you can pop Flying Nimbus and fuck off. With Spopovich, if you do that, I imagine Yamu's going to catch you. Like, he, there isn't an instant counter to Spobovich. I think Spobovich at least has a, a, a fucking chance. Now, sure, is Spobovich going to fucking run his ass to a fucking Jocko ship and catch up? Probably not, right? But, you know, at least, like, at least Spobovich, I feel like, has an semblance of a chance. But even if you don't have a transformation, you can be guaranteed. That's the thing. You can be guaranteed without a transformation to escape baby as opposed to Spobovich, you know if you know i mean to be fair both raiders if you fuck up your active skills you can get caught but like but baby you literally just need to fucking play the floor is lava and you, and you don't get caught like that's what i feel like people don't understand with this raider where Spobovich, that's just that's just not the case right but let's continue so i can even see these by the way which they need to change but moving past that that, that is silly. You should be able to see the Raiders' moveset if you don't have the Raider. That is very silly. I think that's the reason why he brought that up, uh, which I respect him bringing that up. Excuse me. Thinking about his super attacks. Revenge Death Ball. It's his iconic move. Everyone loves it. Everyone was like, oh my god, it's so cool. We finally have Baby. We can do that now. Yes. Why is it, why is it explosion radius so much bigger it's massive than the actual visual indication of it is massive i swear that thing is double the size of a typical sniping move because i have seen literal people like they will instant rise as it's coming towards them and as they're falling down they fall down a little bit it still hits them from the ground the radius is ridiculous on that plus the no i'll give them that pretty darn good and then he's got revenge final flash obviously it's okay it's an okay super but I'm I think pretty it's, sure it's I think guaranteed it's, I think it's after a vanish kick, so that's fun. You're probably already gone from that. And when it comes to Sage 3, he gains way, way too much energy to get to Great Ape. Talking about Vegeta, Vegeta also has a Great Ape, obviously. His is based on a timer. His is based on if Nappa survives. If Nappa survives, then it goes down to, I believe, 500 seconds or 550, some, somewhere around there. And it goes down depending on the damage you do. The, you know, uh, if you finish off any survivors or civilians, it goes down a little bit. Not too much, but it's mainly damage and combat. And you, I would say, see Great 8 Vegeta 30% of the time that you go against Vegeta, unless it's a golden Vegeta or like just a good Vegeta to begin with, then they'll probably get Great 8. But any damage that you deal to Vegeta is transferred to Great 8. I think he might heal, maybe, if he's no, like really heal. low, like less than a bar. I don't think he heals at and all. And I believe maybe it's two bars at that point. But even then, <clears throat> that is, it's like a pity, basically, for him having so little I'm, I'm pretty sure he doesn't heal. For some reason, Baby can get to grade eight with three survivor infections. Three. From stage three to four. That is nothing. That is so easy to do. That's why I see Grade Eight Baby in a in a Baby match probably ninety percent of the time. That should not be a thing. It is such a win factor because, I, like, I, I I'm not. The thing is, he's not wrong, but I would argue that a lot of people sleep on like Vegeta, and I think Baby's whole thing is that he can snowball really really quickly, and it does feel like you know, well, what the fuck can we do? But I feel like it's almost worse with vegeta like i feel like if you're in a situation where napa lived and the stm is not out even if the stm gets out you're fighting a great ape uh, you're fighting a great ape right where like with baby at least like with 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 skill at that point as long as nobody gets down he's not getting great ape with vegeta if napa lives um nine times out of ten you're seeing great ape you're, you are seeing Great Ape, right? So, like, I, I do think uh, Vegeta is very balanced. Um, 
But, uh, you know, I think it might be just the case that I fought a lot of, like, grade 8 Vegeta players, or just, like, um, Vegeta players in general. And it, it truly feels like, oh, Nappa lived, we don't have the SDMR, oh, we lost. Like, that's, like, in the past, it's like, okay, we have to kill him now. Like, we gotta summon Shenron and kill him now, that's our last hope. Now, since they buffed his health, it's like, oh, it's, it's wrapped, it's, it's GG's. Like, with Baby, I think, you know... If he, if the full team is still alive and he's like level three, um, you know, the game is still on. You're getting supplies, right? Um, but like with Vegeta, you know, he has the, the vanish kicks that are phenomenal at defending the STM. He literally is the best raider at defending the STM with those vanish kicks, um, and whatnot. And Apicole is amazing as well. Now, granted, uh, Baby does have the two break strikes that you could use, uh, you know, smartly to kind of mitigate jumping and whatnot, but, um, you know, I, I just think uh, Vegeta's Vanish Kicks can kind of help with that as well to kind of like move you around the fight. Um, but, you know, I, I just think for that, it, it's kind of a matter of depending on how the game is flowing and how the game is going. Um, I just feel like Vegeta feels a little bit more damning at level 3 um, if Nappa is alive. And even if Nappa is dead, it's still like still a game, but I, that's a little bit more manageable. Uh, again, this is assuming Nappa is living every time um, in the most advantageous situation. Um, and Baby's in the most advantageous situation. He has a bunch of, like, um, you know, servants. Um, you could argue, like, what's a worse situation? Um, I think that's fair. But I, I feel like almost for Vegeta, I feel like it, it's more like Doom um, when he, Nappa lives as opposed to Baby getting level 3 and getting those 3 survivors because, you know, typically in my in my experience i'm seeing you know level three baby during the stm phase like occasionally i'll i'll see like i'll see some like level three babies before the stm um comes out but then we're getting supplies that i feel like there's still a chance for with vegeta and his best situation i feel like it's almost like it's over the game is already over right like you have to kill him and killing him is like pretty rough but that's just my take on that um but getting three survivors just in my experience playing baby i think it's so fucking hard to get out of that level one really quickly against a good group i don't fucking mind it only being three sieves to get grade eight but i am totally down for them reducing his health pool because i think with baby he heals and his health pool expands dramatically i'm down for that being tweaked i think that's a little excessive because i will admit i've definitely i mean to be fair vegeta's also been in the game for longer but I have totally killed a lot more grade 8 Vegetas than I ever had baby. I think I maybe killed one baby player that was literally throwing as grade 8. Um, you know, and I think it was like once. So to um, Charmon's uh, credit here, I, I, I do think that is fair that grade 8 is OP. He, he's definitely massively OP. I think that's totally fair to say. Once he reaches grade 8, even if he didn't heal, which we'll get to that, it would still be extremely hard to deal with. He doesn't have the buff that Vegeta does to where you can only attack his tail, which, okay, that's kind of nice, but he takes extreme reduced damage to where you're not going to do much damage to him. Uh, I would say a typical super that does about a bar. We're hoping to do 70% of a bar to him, which isn't that crazy, but when it comes to having grade 8 by the time, you'll probably have a couple dead teammates. Maybe best case scenario, it's a 4 or 5 V1 at that point. And even if it was a 1v7, what are you going to do? He has the stomp. He can make everyone run away. He can uh, he can uh, do his super powerful attack to where he's, he's invincible for that amount of time. He can do his area destruction, which, by the way, his area destruction in stage 4 is faster than normal. It's not 15 seconds. I'm not sure how fast it is, but it, it is, is faster. It is very quick, yeah. I'm not sure why he has that, but Vegeta doesn't. They're just giving that to all new Raiders it, it just, for They some gave reason. him so many unnecessary buffs compared to everyone else, specifically Vegeta, obviously, because that is the closest comparison when it comes to Great Ape alone. But he has so much. So much. It's, it's ridiculous. And I think the things that need to be changed, if we're going to make it fun for both the Raider and Survivors, if you're in Stage 1, there needs to be a small, and I mean small, heartbeat radius. I'm talking maybe 30 meters, maybe even 20, honestly. Because if you're going to have that, you need some sort of...
again, I understand where he's coming from, and I and I and I want to I want to agree with him. I really want to, but the thing is, it is just too easy to get away from get a one get away from level one baby, dude. It is just it is too fucking easy. If you know where he is, as long as, dude, if as long as you're actively like looking around you um all the time you're like never have i gotten caught sure if i if i fucking got caught if i sold 100 it, it's it's happened but have we lost all those games where i've gotten caught no but to be fair i'm not gonna camp going back to his other point and whatnot but like if they are going to add a heartbeat monitor or whatever monitor uh radius to level one baby they have to reduce the amount of civilians you need they have to. And then at that point, you can make the argument reducing the amount of sieves and absorptions for like level two and onward for sure. They would have to like rework baby across the board at that point, because I understand it would kind of be a, a domino effect in that case. But uh, that they would have to. Uh, if they gave the heartbeats with no change of the baby, I think that would kill the raider. I think that would absolutely fucking kill the raider. 100 percent. Because at that point, any anytime you get remotely close, people just pop instant rise, and then and then you're gone. Even when they didn't know you were there, so it would just absolutely kill the raider. Uh, at that point. Indication, because sometimes there is no audio. Audio can mess up. Audio occlusion in this game isn't really existent, but sometimes you just won't hear anything, and then you just get one shot, and you'll probably get camped to death. That's not fun, and it's not really deserved. I think we need to make it a little bit more skill based. I think his move to infected ability needs to be much shorter to where if you want to be baby, you need to micromanage where you're going to at stage one. And maybe you can make it to where you're more rewarded for infecting civilians. I'd say three civilian infections, he can go to stage two. Don't force us into the cutscene. Make it to where during the cutscene, the timer still goes down and survivors are allowed to do something. That's already a nerf to him because survivors can do stuff while he can't do anything. So that you're already nerfing that aspect while buffing others. Oh, I would fair. also reduce the range at which he can actually infect, maybe just by a meter, because right now he he can activate it from probably. I think. I, again, again, they would have to make it. They would have to make it less sibs. I just like. Because again, you're at the potential of killing the raider at that point. It is already fairly easy to avoid a uh, baby at this point. Um. I think you would be killing the raider by doing that personally. They would have to adjust the sieve requirement. Otherwise, I, I don't think I could ever be on board with that personally. I think five meters away, maybe further. It's it's not visually very pleasing to see that he is so far away from you, yet he'll still one shot you as if it's like a melee move. It's just it's not fun. I, I would change it more, but I can't think of that right now. Right now I'm just ranting. Stage two. You need more energy to get to stage three. I think that needs to be a thing. Stage one to two, less energy. Stage three, uh, uh, stage two to three, and three to four. Ah, uh, I don't know, man, because it's it's tough, dude. I think if anything, I would be more on board for it being more difficult to get stage four. Um, and just because like stage three, I do think it. it it's funny because I feel like going stage three in, in certain cases with baby is absolutely throwing the fucking game. Um, because, uh, you know, you're giving the su survivors supplies. And one thing that uh, I don't think he's mentioned at all in this video is that survivors will intentionally save infective sieves to force baby to evolve. Because you can't force baby to evolve with that mechanic. Um, and force supplies to spawn. And that can be the difference between winning and losing. So, again, that, that's, you know, just another thing I want to bring up there. You need more. I think that definitely needs to be a thing. Maybe should be rewarded more for survivors interacting with his infected civilians. And speaking of the infected civilian react, uh, interaction. That could be a pro to con for what we just mentioned. That timer that you're locked into that needs to be reduced. It's like a good 15 seconds the thing is maybe maybe at later levels like two and three i would be on board but uh for level one i think it needs to say the same just because i feel like what, what's what the whole baby mechanic and the way they made it seem to be in the initial trailer which i think is misleading is that if you if you got somebody um you know caught by an effective sieve in the trailer they made it seem like you could just instantly blip to them and fucking get them right 
we all know that's not the fucking case because the, the, the effective sieves are so spread out that when somebody does uh, interact with an ineffective sieve, most of the times, and unfortunately, I feel like for me personally, it's like nine out of 10 times, I am never able to take advantage of that, uh, like ever as level one, baby. And maybe that's just bad map awareness or something on my part, but let me know in the comments below. Are you ever able to take advantage of the survivor getting caught by an effective sieve? I personally typically am not able to do so. So I think maybe at stages two, three onwards, sure, but level one, absolutely not. If anything, you could even argue it should be longer. Whoa. But I'm, you know, maybe that's still too much, but. No game should have a stun where you are locked in place and there's nothing you can do for 15 seconds. It needs to be maybe five. And if you want to be generous, we can do eight. But you need to cut it in half at the least. And that alone, I would give you, I'd give him a little bit more energy for each interaction. It's already so minute. It doesn't really make a big difference most of the time. So maybe if two survivors interact with infected civilians... That's almost, almost, not quite, but the equivalent of infecting a civilian. I'd give them that. And I'd make the stun reduced. It's mainly just an information and a little boost to your energy. That's what it should be. I would still keep the that, that. That, that, that's what it is. What do you, what do you, like, what do you mean? That, that's exactly what it is. It's a little boost to your energy and some information. Because typically after they get infected, they've been infected for so long, they can just get the fuck out of there. And then you didn't get to reap any rewards, really, because it's so little energy. So, like... Again, I, I think that mechanic, the, the, the devs put too much of their chips on that, and it doesn't give you enough energy to, like, make it valuable, especially at level 1. So, like, again, that's why I, I feel like reducing the stun time, I don't really... Th it would just help survivors and fuck baby. Like, that's all that would do in that case. That's why I, I just personally don't agree with that change. The fact that you could cancel it with a dragon change or angry shout... Again, you could get... Something like that. What you can literally break free of it with, with different skills already. So just like, I, I, I don't know about that one personally. Comes to call servants. He should not be rewarded for singling out one survivor. I think that's fair. I'm not sure the best way to balance that out. But I would certainly say that maybe if you infect a survivor and they're still alive, they, you know, they didn't die technically. Obviously, those your servant, but you know what I mean? Maybe you can use Call Servant to wear it for five seconds, maybe even a little bit shorter. But for I, I just had an idea, and I don't want to lose it. I apologize for interrupting him. My idea to mitigate that would be uh, if you infect uh, a survivor, it just forces you to teleport away. And then um, you won't be able to teleport near that survivor for a certain amount of time. And that way, Baby still gets the benefit of downing a survivor. That civilian is still down. Um, that infected civilian is still on the survivor. Because typically, it typically, you know, it ordinarily is. Um, but it forces you to teleport away. You get the information of when they're going for the res um, and whatnot. But it teleports you away to, like, the farthest, like, infective civilian or something. Um, maybe that's a way to, like, kind of counter that. Because I agree that it, that isn't fun. That isn't fun, that happening. For, for five seconds and this is completely reworking the ability yes because it it's just not fun that's not good game design so i would just change it maybe to where for five seconds you make it to where every sur survivor that's infected kind of get their vision blurred and they look towards your direction and start walking to you and now that's not crazy powerful but imagine if you're in the middle of a fight and you do that okay that's pretty good Obviously, I'd make the cooldown pretty significant. I'd make it just a pretty powerful stun for anyone that is infected. Uh, you can change to something else. I don't really care. It should be changed to what it is now instead of rewarding Baby for singling out one to two people and just not letting them play the game. Stage two. One thing I want to say about that whole thing in particular, um, I don't think all Baby players do this. I, I, I truly don't. Um, now, again, it is incentivized, so that's why people do it, but I think this is also, like, an ethical thing based on, like, certain players. I don't camp ever, right? I, I've, I've done, I've tried my best to, like, not camp. If I am camping, I'm like, okay, you guys, like, typically it's the chat screaming in my ear, camp, 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 and I'll camp. Most times, like, tunneling, sure, you can argue I, I've tunneled, for sure, but, like, I've never, like, fucking faced, like, I'm just 
staring at a body. I've never face camped in this game. So I think I think it's bitch made. I, I generally think it's bitch made. I don't think it's fun on either side. I don't think it's enjoyable. But also, uh, in defense of some raiders, some survivors don't give a fuck about the raider having fun either. And they will just, you know, infinitely stun the raider and throw out the, the, the strongest super attacks known to fucking man, Justice Rush, into Final Explosion, what have you, right? So, like, you know, I, I feel like placing... I'm not, I'm not saying Charbon is doing this here either, but I feel like some players place all of the blame on the raider. When some players, and again, this is why I say playing the raider kind of helps you understand this... Some people don't understand what the Raider goes through or what they actually have to fucking do to get a W, right? Like, they, they're just seeing it from the survivor's point of view, but sometimes seeing it from that Raider's point of view is really helpful in understanding why some Raiders do what they do, even if they might not even want to do that. Because some survivors can fucking cheese the shit out of you. And I'm not saying Raiders can't do the same, but, you know, there's a, there's a gray line between like both parties you know cheesing each other it's not you know so black and white where it's just oh it's just raiders or oh it's just survivors like both both sides are you know at fault for doing this three stage three is overall okay as long as you reduce the energy it's needed to get from stage two to three and uh again cutscene that's fine because the displacement if you can make it to where only infected have to see that cool if not whatever at this point if you remove the one to two and three to four. I think it should only be fine. infected. If it's just one cutscene I'm forced into. Uh, I think he's overall fine, but both with stage three, uh, two and three, his shield barrier should not be a breaker. You should not be able to use that while being damaged. That should just be a basic. I would extend the duration, sure, if you're not going to let it be a breaker. Maybe by a couple. I, I just think if you do that, it will expose how bad baby truly is, man. If you get rid of his second uh, break strike, the shield one, I think that will just absolutely expose how truly awful this Raider is. I think because at that point, you know, he's losing one of his lines of defense. Uh, I mean, you know, if they replace it with something uh, good, like an offensive uh, move, maybe that would make him a little bit better. But like, I think he fucking needs it, dude. I think he fucking needs it because again, there's an active skill that's potentially like not available and then he has that dash at level two which is pretty okay actually um and then he has his two break strikes so he technically only has two offensive abilities uh, all the time being his normal break strike and a dash with the third break strike not dealing any damage is just like a get off me move right a couple seconds three seconds four seconds whatever you want to do make it more of a you know ahead of time you're protecting yourself from key blasts sure but not a breaker. He should not have two breakers. I think the only other... I do believe Broly has two breakers. Uh, with his he does. Shield a level three. Normal breaker. But what is it called? Let me make sure I don't get... Hey, uh, you could slightly argue that Broly has three breakers, technically, uh, or break strikes. I, I'm being... I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being a little cheesy here, but technically his R1 super, the one that gives him the bubble with the blast coming off, I don't think you can technically use that. You can't use that mid combo, but like you can use it as a shield. So it's technically not a break strike, but you could have like three invulnerability moves on with Broly at one point, right? So like, is that okay? You know, just, you know, just saying. Get this wrong. His gigantic power, I believe, in Omega Blaster, whatever it's called, whatever the shield. I'm sure, we're all familiar with it. I believe you can use that as a breaker as well. But that's Broly. He's meant to fight. And Broly's an issue on his own, but we're talking about Baby for now. Uh, it shouldn't be a breaker. Change that. What's wrong with Broly, bro? What's uh? What's uh? What's uh? What's, uh, what's wrong with Broly? I I feel like Broly's in a pretty good spot. I'm, Broly was. Broly was pretty bad on, on, on release as well. I mean, I don't think he was the worst Raider, but he, he wasn't that great. I mean, me and Stray were, like, shouting that out for the longest time, too. So I'm just... <clears throat> what's, uh, what's up with Broly, dude? <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> I don't think any Raider should really have more than one Breaker as to not reward them for just kind of letting themselves be hit. Besides, like, Stage 4. Because Stage 4 should be a win condition. Foremost. That's fair. You can make it not kind of like Cell or Freezer or... I guess Kid Boo to an extension that, you know, all the original three. But um, 
when it comes to that, I would definitely make it to where no two breakers for stage two and three. And when it comes to three to four, make it take four infections instead of three to get to grade eight. And also, don't let him heal. He should not heal when going that's to fair. grade eight. That that's should fair. not be a thing. If you do damage to baby, it should be permanent. It should be kind of like Frieza or Cell to where every lick of damage you do to him is actually impactful. So make it to where it's actually worth fighting him at stage two and three and four. Because right now, once he reaches stage four, of course, it's a great ape. It should be intimidating. It's completely unwinnable. You cannot beat it. In I think all that's my fair. Time of playing well, one, one thing I will say, I think what, what he's saying there mostly is fair. But one thing I will say, it is 100% worth fighting baby at level two. And this is anybody doing a level two strat. Uh, it is 100% worth picking at the Raider's health before the STM comes out, because if you're in a situation where you've been gradually picking at his health as a team, when the STM comes out, ideally you should be waiting till the whole team has their transformations, then you plant that final key, you will have more of a chance of winning that final jumping, because I think what a lot of teams do is that they don't fight the Raider at all when someone's level 2 stratting, the uh, STM will come out, and then they jump him once, and then that's not enough, and then the Raider wins, right? So you absolutely should be fighting the Raider if they are level two stratting. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't hurt at all anyway if you have a reliable means of getting away, if you're confident enough in doing so. But say if you're like double stacking, I mean, you can't fucking stack in this game anymore because it... anyways, that's a rent for a better day. Um, yeah, I mean, you should be taking pieces of his health off that way for the defense phase. You're in a better situation. Just want to get that out there. I have not seen one victory against a grade 8 baby. Now, I'm sure that has happened, definitely. To, to his credit, I think I've only gotten the one. The amount of rarity for that is ridiculous. I've seen Vegeta players at, at a grade 8 lose in, in Season 6. But none, no babies at all. That's just... That I don't think I've seen any Vegetas. Every other Raider besides Boo, because Boo can't even make it to Kid Boo, uh, I've seen die at Stage 4 plenty of times. But not... Not baby. And that is just, that is quite unfortunate. There's a lot of things that I think need to be changed, and I could make a more in depth, you know, talk about this. But I just wanted to point out that baby is not atrocious. He is not bad. In fact, he is probably, I think he's in contention for the best raider in the game, personally. I think it definitely does come down to the last three raiders, unfortunately. I, I, I think that is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, 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 I mean, you guys know. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell on that too much. I don't think Baby is even remotely close to being one of the best Raiders in the game. He is way too snowball dependent. Um, I, the fact that his level one is so easily, uh, played against. Um, also another thing that we've uh, ignored in this video was the like the Dragon Balls. The reason why the level 2 strat is so strong for Goku Black and Zamasu is because without the Dragon Balls and now without the supplies, survivors have to go tit for tat with Goku Black before the SDM comes out and deal a lot of damage. Uh, otherwise, what I just said previously about the SDM phase and not being able to like kill the Raider is going to happen all the time. With Baby, at least you have the opportunity to get the level 4. And if somebody has a really decked out level 4 build, or if you're just really good at like setting them up, you can like make a comeback, a comeback in that regard. I think for that alone, I even know how, I mean, I just don't know how you could even, you know, come close to saying Baby is the best Raider in the game. If you want to argue that his level 4 is the best in the game, you could 100% do that. I think that is fair. That is valid. Um, but you could argue, like he was arguing as well, that level 4 should be win conditions but um i i don't i don't think uh i don't think baby is the best raider in the game i mean if i had to break it i think goku black goku black huge gap <laughs> huge gap and then uh probably broly as um second best um in the game i think vegeta is definitely in the conversation as well uh in terms of level three maybe you could argue Maybe you could argue, baby, for level three, but I think you would have to make a really fucking good argument. Um, but in terms of, let me let me look at the Raiders really quick. Yeah, I, I think you could make an argument for uh, Vegeta. Um, you could even make an argument for Cell with his level three being so strong. But that's granted, you have to get out of that level two 
Frieza, I feel like, has fallen off a lot. I think Ginyu has fallen off a lot. Boo is in a pretty weird place. Uh, just because I feel like uh, the earlier stages, he kind of struggles. And I don't think Super Boo is the win condition that he used to be back in the day. Um, but I think at best, you could argue Baby like being in top three. But he's three for sure. Um, but yeah. I think it definitely does come down to the last three Raiders, unfortunately. Their, their game design has not been very fun. When it comes to Broly, Goku Black, and Baby, they're definitely the, the three top dogs in this game. All for different reasons. But Baby is definitely a contender for the most powerful. And I disagree. I don't know if you guys way. took the Jupiter's survey. But in his survey, Baby was ranked the least fun out of all the Raiders to go against. And that needs to be addressed. 1000%. But because the thing is, the thing is, least fun doesn't mean the best Raider. I think, again, and I don't know if he mentions this, I think it's a little unfair to mention that part of the survey without mentioning that i i think in that survey i don't think people unless i'm wrong because we we did a video on the survey i'm pretty sure people were not saying that baby was the best raider so i feel like to again I, again i don't know if he did it intentionally uh but i think to bring up the fact that baby was voted the least fun to go up against but also like ignore the fact that he wasn't rated the best raider either i don't think i, I just don't think that's fair Is goku black I, I would say, if I'm going to compare them directly, Goku Black's probably more powerful, but I... I'm sorry, there's no way you're saying probably, bro. The, 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 Goku Black was so fucking good, they literally had to go back to all the old Raiders and give him Goku Black's snipe with the AoE explosion. He was that fucking good. They're like, all right, bro, these other Raiders are so aged. We have to give him the shit that Goku Black has. That's how definitively the best this Raider is. Baby is not changing the way other Raiders play or function because he's so good. Just, just something I want to throw out there. I just, Baby is just not fun. His game design is horrible. I change a lot about it. I think I'm done ranting for now. That's about all I wanted to get out. I appreciate you listening. And, uh. Iron Kane, you need to fix your opinion. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, that was a fun video, dude. Uh, that, w that was a fun video. Again, he kept it very respectable. Guys, please, please. I know a lot of you guys are opinionated. So a lot of y'all want to talk shit. Please, please show this man some love. Uh, you know, to have the, the balls to call me out. And he kept it very respectful. There was no name calling at all. Uh, which he absolutely could have done. Because I know I fucking definitely know did some like playground insults against people in the past like playing calling people dummies and whatnot uh not using the word dummy but you know what i mean so i, I appreciate homie uh you know keeping things uh respectful and whatnot uh but yeah with that being said that's the video leave a like if you enjoyed uh comment down below if you agree with homie um i obviously disagree uh and i don't really think you could contest the fact that baby is the worst raider on on release i just truly feel that in my bones because who who would be who would be who would be worse who would be worse on release who, who would be worse who who would be worse is is it vegeta no i don't i don't i don't think so is it ginyu fuck no <laughs> definitely fucking not is it broly absolutely not is it goku black no so i mean i was not trying to say bro but i, I think i've gotten a pretty much all of my points out um like throughout all my interjections in this video that being said that's gonna be it leave a like you enjoyed uh comment down below your thoughts again and subscribe to iron king iron king channel for more videos like these and i'll catch y'all and the next one take care stay safe have fun uh peace out and y'all um uh, make more videos like these dude these are fucking fun i love having discussions like these and fucking uh talking up with y'all because uh again i do think i undersold baby as uh a level three i do think his level three is a little bit stronger than i originally thought um but i i just love having the conversation about this uh with the game just talking about other passionate uh people uh with breakers we I, we need more of this dude i i want more of this so uh that being said i'll catch y'all next time take care y'all peace out